Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, welcome back to the show. We are joined once again by John Riggio, our professional tennis player, our architect, and our dear friend of the show, John, welcome to the show again today. Excited to have you here on the podcast, Zoomcast, and he's always surprising me with something new after all these years. And is it true you're friends with Richard Branson? Yes, of course. Of course. Look at you. Oh, my goodness. And he actually was one of your sponsors. So this is a great connection we're going to talk about today. And, of course, more about John himself. I'll have him introduce himself and say hello to everyone before we start. Hello, my name is John Riggio. And today I'm going to talk about some pro tennis playing from years ago. I have some nice stories. I think today um, I wanted to tell you about uh, a story of um, when I was on Court 33 at the National Tennis Center. I had my own court. And um, while I was there, I was playing my pro matches and... um, one of the coaches there is really the captain of the players who was Vita Scary Riders. He told me that I need to really get more sponsors for me to really move ahead in tennis. And uh, when I was there, also Boris Becker was there and he was talking to me and he was also suggesting the same thing. I really have to get more sponsors. Mm-hmm. They were also suggesting with the sponsors I would get more publicity too. Yeah. And um, so what happened was I called around to a few people right now. And um, not all of them were interested in helping me. But I remembered um, when I was younger in the neighborhood I live in, um, I had met Sir Richard Branson. He used to live there in the same school district and uh, went to the same schools and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And I uh, called him up and his company and I forwarded the message through to see if they're interested in helping me out with the sponsorship with the pro tennis. And they came back, they said yes. So that was really good. I was really happy about it. And so now on, on Court 33, things really started to develop. What happened is uh, they built a tennis center for me on Ali Pond, and it had a brand new building with um, showers, a locker room, uh, a bubble over, I think it must be six courts. And uh, they had a uh, supervisor there in the building to maintain it. So while I was on court 33, they also had me go to my new tennis center at Ali Pond Court, uh, not at court 33, at uh, at the Ali Pond. And um, so one interesting thing about that first is, um, oh, so when I was younger, I met uh, Richard Branson. He, he, he had already seen me playing in the gymnastics show in the school because he was there. His children were going to the same exact elementary school. And they saw me win that gymnastics. Wow. And that was led to that Olympic star program. So they already knew me from things like that. And uh, then uh, a few years later, I had a friend that his uh, parent was was friends with Richard Branson. So I had met him a couple times at their house. Mm-hmm. And uh, I talked to him. Richard Branson uh, really thought I could really achieve as I grow up. Gave me some advice. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then really one interesting thing at that age, too, was... Uh, when I was younger, the schedule was so busy. Sometimes I have to wake up by like five o'clock in the morning. Wow. Do all kinds of different things. And I end up going to sleep at maybe like 12 o'clock at night. So when I had talked to him one time, I remember I was over at my friend's house. It was already like 1130 in the evening. It was already very late. So um, so I was still at that time uh, about my schedule. Because uh, I was always wondering if the schedule I had, you know, sometimes waking up very early, going to bed very late, and things like that were really correct. I wasn't sure if they were, you know, this was like wearing down or something. And then I think you know, after meeting Richard Branson and he was had the same kind of schedule, I thought maybe that kind of schedule was really like a schedule for success. 
I thought it was very interesting. And um, so from there, that was sort of really good. I sort of um, thought that that kind of schedule was really going to make me advance and um, that it wasn't really wrong. So that's good. So then uh, now going back to uh, Ali Pond, so they constructed the building in Ali Pond, they put the uh, tennis bubble there, and I have some photographs I could share them with you now. As always, we love it. The only problem is I don't have the original photographs. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, have you ever been to his private island or not yet? Um, in fact, uh, as far as like a friendship, I only know him as someone like a friend in the neighborhood. Got it. <laughs> I really haven't gone over his house or anything like that. And um, okay, so let me share this now. Okay. Yeah, just had there to open that file up so it looks Perfect. good. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so what's happened here is I was able to find some pictures. They aren't pictures from my camera. They're just on the internet. A lot of them are coming from Google and things like that. And uh, so the tennis area here at Alley Pond, a lot of it is still sort of intact. It wow. hasn't changed that much. I noticed in recent years, like in year... Uh, 20, 20 uh -huh. it started to do another renovation. It was, it really didn't change for many years. And wow. uh, I noticed they renovated a couple times. It looks like the tennis center there has a new name to it. So let me just go through some of these pictures. So this picture, what sure. it is, it's looking at the whole line of courts in the summertime. Okay. Uh, this is because this, the new owners, they don't keep the bubble over the courts. Mm -hmm. they then they just left with that building. And the building you see in the in the distance here, it has some windows and a door yep. open. What isn't really the same as when it was originally constructed for me. So now this here, this is one chapter where it says Addy Pond Tennis Center. They changed their name recently. Yeah. And then this shows the overhead of um, I could just zoom it in. Wow. This has overhead of the port. So this is an overhead picture, it shows the whole line of tennis courts this is now with the bubble over the courts okay now this is showing a recent picture but it shows to the right the building here now this yeah. building the only thing about this building is originally when they did this for me this whole area under this steel beam was all glass oh this my goodness all glass panels yes it was built permanently with uh -oh. the, bubble in the same place Gonna say what happened to it. <laughs> yes, the originally it was built where they put the bubble in place and they okay. had all the glass windows. And wow. uh, this, so that's why they had a big beam there. So mm -hmm. this here is different because what they did is the new owners they closed up the wall and they only use the bubble seasonally, just in the winter time, and in the summer they leave the courts open. So this is another overhead picture shows the building here to the right, and then this long. Uh, bubble here and up to the right over here is where the parking is there's a nice parking lot mm -hmm. right up there. so everyone come here they go to a parking if this had a public park building here the whole time that has been a long time and from there you walk into the building and let's go to the next picture let's see how it looks okay this awesome. is the same. You know, this one is pretty good because it shows here the major road here yeah you turn off here to, on the outer pond and you go into this parking lot, and and here it has the uh, I think it's some baseball field. I think my parents had like their first kiss at Alley Pond Park. I just have to tell you that they're both really? from Whitestone, Queens. <laughs> yes. Wow! So I know off the Grand Central, I went past there. Yeah, I got off that one time, and my dad showed me this is the Alley Pond, and I'm like, what's Alley Pond? I didn't know, you know. But <laughs> yes, and so this is the whole thing here with the parking and everything. And, um, and so it works really good. So it's a nice location. Okay, so now this is the picture of Sir Richard Branson. So I know him from where I used to live. And uh, let's just go back to the pictures. 
Okay, good. Okay, so now, um, so one important thing about the whole thing with Richard Branson and the new courts, and I was just remembering this just recently, I really wasn't remembering every exact match and tournament and everything. But what happened was um, things became very successful for uh, the whole sponsorship of Richard Branson. I was playing there at the Adi Pond and they had me play all kinds of uh, tournaments. I was teaching pro players that usually players that they really want them to win uh, a match, a big game. They used to send them to me to see if I could teach them how to win. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times I go through the basic um, uh, teaching of tennis with them and it really was successful. I was successful at helping them out. A lot of times a uh, student would come to me, I would teach them for a while and then they would try to uh, play like a big tournament and then they come back and tell me they won. So yeah. now their sponsors won the $500,000. You know, so they're really happy about wow. it. And the lessons they used to teach me, they were very expensive. They, I was told that through the tennis uh, network they had there, they had to pay the tennis center between ten thousand and fifteen thousand dollars for a one hour lesson that I would give them. So it was really very valuable and, and then they could go for that much money in the lesson, they could end up winning a lot more money when they win the tournament. So it was working out pretty good for them. Wow. And um then wow. uh what happened is most importantly was uh, there was one tournament that I played in and um they came down to the final match. So they sent the final match at Addy Pond. Uh, my um, supervisor at the Addy Pond, who used to take care of the opening and closing of the doors, watching the whole tennis center, watching my games, uh, his name was Henry Polanski, and he was employed by the city of New York. Because officially the whole Addy Pond is really owned by the city of New York. And, um, and uh, so that's how the whole building was working. And so what happened is he told me that we were going to have a big event, big final match, invite family, friends. They can come and see the big event. And so because of that, I invited some some people, invited my girlfriend, invited uh, family, invited neighborhood friends, things like that. And uh, so the event came up. And so for the event, they really put it on a nice a national television. It had all kinds of big television cameras there. They had signage on there for the name of the final match of that tournament. And uh, so while we're there on the court, there's you know that big that wall is all glass originally. So they everyone could sit in there. I think the room held maybe about 100 people. And so when I was there, what happened is Richard Branson was there. So on my side of the court, Richard Branson was there. I had other sponsors there, people that wanted to watch the match. Um, family and friends were there to show up. Then on the other side was my opponent for the final match, and he had his sponsors there too, and some of their friends were there. So it was a, a full room. It was a televised match, and um, I won the match pretty big. And uh, it was really a big event. Yeah. I was playing really excellent. They really liked my serves. I could ace my opponent. And I had one nice shot. I remember I hit the, my opponent hit to my right side. I ran over and was able to hit the ball all the way across the court to beat them. And they were really amazed by it. They were really happy. So uh, I had won the match. Everything was really good. Uh, and then uh, after the match was over, um, uh, we had a, a photo session. Um, so the photo session, what we did was we waited for everyone to leave. And uh, they had a picture with me and the trophy and uh, me, Richard Branson, and the trophy. He was happy to see me and everything. And so that was really big. And uh, I don't have any photographs of that whole thing. I don't have pictures. I, they didn't give me a copy of the picture. Ah, oh, don't you wish you I know, I know. If you're out there listening. <laughs> I don't know how to get a copy of the picture. Uh, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll, I'll get a copy of the picture. I don't know. But it's somewhere. They have a very nice picture of me winning the match. And um, 
So that was really good. That's so cool. And I think uh, one interesting thing is uh, also with Richard Branson, that's my sponsor, uh, they built the whole tennis center. And in the middle of that building that I had shown on the picture there, yeah. I had my own desk. They gave me this very nice desk. It's a $3,000 desk. The supervisor showed me the receipt for it. And it used to face the glass wall that looked out onto the courts. Uh, so then from to the left side is the um, doctor rooms. They had a men's locker room and a ladies' locker room. And to the right was the uh, entrance okay. table and the door uh, going out to the outside. Now, I think that whole arrangement of the building hasn't changed. I think in 2020, wow. they renovated and adjusted. I noticed the location of the door of that building was slightly different. And um, let me see if I can show a picture of that yeah. door. I have it here. What I have to do is I have to just get the this loaded up into my PDF. Okay, I have it here now. Sure. Okay, let me just share it for you. Okay, good. Okay, so now what this is, this is a series of some PDF uh, files I just took today. These are on the internet. Now what this is, this isn't the original photograph. Mm -hmm. This is just recently, after they had changed the tennis center name, it looks like uh, the, this in recent times. Mm -hmm. And they changed the location of the door entrance. So the door entrance is over here on the side. Yeah. But just recently, it looks like they put in a handicap ramp, and it looks like this fabric yep. uh, vestibule. I and remember that. Mm -hmm. But everything else is exactly the same. These windows they had in the original building, the roof, everything, the whole thing is different. It was a different color on the outside. It looks like they had painted over it recently, so it looks different now. And uh, like I explained, on, on the side of the wall was all glass. It was just a glass wall. Uh, the glass wall was very similar to like the glass wall they have at the uh, Sun East. It's still the same with the glass wall. Mm -hmm. I got a whole glass wall there. And uh, let me see if I can get the next picture. Haven't been there in three years to the tennis center. Did you go this year, or you just watch it on uh, on TV like the rest of us? Which center? Which one? Uh, in Queens, the U.S. Did you watch uh, the Open and all that? Yeah. Okay. So now this year, this is um. Another picture. Okay, so this is coming through here. This is just a picture. Now, this is showing the wall that's completely closed. Okay. But it shows basically how the window you would look onto the courts. So before this wow. was a whole glass wall. But they had to change it because they changed the idea of having their tennis bubble only seasonal. So let me just wow. take the next one. So cool. Okay, this is so next cool. picture. This one is going to show the inside of the mm -hmm. box. Let me just share this. Okay, so now this is showing the uh, inside of the bubble. It used to look very similar to this. This is in recent time. This has the new lights and everything, new LED lighting they have in the bubbles. It looked, used to look very similar to this. It isn't too different. Yeah. Let me get the next one now. Dum -da -da, John Riggio, if you are listening, our tennis extraordinaire and architect extraordinaire. Okay, okay so Common is, Point, Queens. And this is another PDF uh, of a photograph. It shows here, uh, just shown from the courts all the way down to the building. Uh, and this has the, the wall closed off with mm -hmm. just openings of the windows. So this is the, the new one. It isn't the original one that was all glass. So that just shows another picture of that. Wow. And um, so that was really good. And I think um, the whole thing about the success of that final match that I won and everything is also equal to a lot of winnings. I think the winnings were like 25 times the cost of the tennis bubble and the building. It was really uh, a big win. 
It was a real professional tennis match. And uh, so there was a lot of money involved with the whole tournament and winning and the trophy and everything like that. So it was a big success uh, at that point. I mean, that was really good. You know, I called Richard Branson's company because I knew him from where I lived. And then just a few months later, um, winning really big. He's really uh, doing excellent with this as a, as a sponsorship. So it was, it was really amazing. There was really mm -hmm. no downside to it. What happened is at this point, um, as things went on with the tennis, since um, there were some things that happened there, the tennis court that I had said that they had closed the, that whole tennis court, but had nothing to do with me. So my tennis court, they moved it over to Sun East. But what happened is between that time and Sun East, Richard Branson sold his court contract. So he sold it for $5 million to Gloria Vanderbilt. Oh, my goodness. Gloria Vanderbilt and her sports group. Wow. So that was the time when that happened. I, I added it to my list on my webpage of events, but before I really didn't have the whole thing pieced together, but that's what was, was happening. So there was a name to the sponsor at that time from Court 33 and Adi Pond. And uh, then at Sun East, the contract change ownership and then I'm on to the next sponsor so that's really that's what was nice. happening at that time so I think that that puts the pieces together and I think the only one problem at this time was uh even though I know Richard Benson from where I live and I uh, called them you know I had no problem with talking to him or anything like that but there wasn't that much communication at this time yeah, I really uh, didn't have any contact to call his company and really discuss everything that was going on because I think at the time when they had some kind of problem there in the tennis center with uh, Henry Polanski and uh, it had nothing to do with me, I really couldn't call over to them and tell them. They, uh, I didn't have a really uh, everyday contact to talk to on that. and. Uh, I think that could have delayed things a little. They could have delayed things maybe if it's three months, six months, a year. I think yeah. My contract value would probably go up. Maybe it would go up times five. I don't know. But um, so that caused uh, a problem. And so that whole incident and uh, the changing of the contract was, was separate from uh, the time of the 87 U.S. Open. So that was a, a different event. It had nothing to do with Richard Branson's contract or anything like that. But I think uh, more communication might have helped a little, might have delayed things. Mm -hmm. The reason is because I think uh, they have people inside the U.S. Tennis Center that I don't even know who they are. And a lot of times my sponsors have no idea who they are, who are waiting to grab anything they can. They, yeah. they couldn't wait to grab onto the icon bubble in the building and play with it. Because um, at the time when I had um, my sponsor, Richard Branson, and we built the thing, we, we were letting all the top pros in. Wow. All the, all the Always a story. Players. Always we, fascinating. We John Bridgio. And probably, you know, the word gets back over to those people there. And they can't wait to grab at it because they had already did something with mm -hmm. one of the tennis bubbles that was earned by Brian Godfrey years ago. Wow. A player that's about 14 years older than me. And they had given him this tennis bubble, and then he ended up leaving it there. Wow. Oh, my other, goodness. The other pros, they used to, they told me the story that they really are holding his tennis bubble there, that he wasn't. That's to crazy. Move it. Well, and I've... It's, it's the same situation where, you know, the tennis bubble is constructed by, like, the sponsor. Wow. It isn't really owned by the player. So, so they were able to really hold on to that tennis bubble too. So I so the so what had happened is they really weren't able to keep my tennis bubble even in Alley Pond. They took it, moved it, yeah, <laughs> it was relocated into Sutton East later on. Just great. Well, John, thank you for being here. We must go. Tell us how we can contact you, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, the best way to contact me is to go onto Facebook, look up John Reggio Pro Tennis Player, and you have my contact information. You can just send me a message. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. I can't wait to see what else is in store. You always surprise me. Thank you. Uh, go to the Facebook page, of course, check him out there. And if you need his architectural services, my goodness, he's brilliant at that too. He has many, many talents. John Reggio, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, my fellow uh, tri-state area man. Uh, you're currently in New Jersey, right? Yes, of course. One state away. All right, John, hopefully I meet you one of these days and hopefully we can talk again next week. Thanks so much. Sure, nice to meet you now, back there. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knock down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.